So yeah, I love. I mean, this is like I think this is the best beachhead for this uh, for this argument that it's like you you know there's there's things that are really good um, that that like forms server apps are just really really good at that and um, yeah it's really hard to build a React site that's gonna React app that's gonna use those things as developers we don't really have control over like what we're building and and we're building like a backend app for forms to edit data and so you might say like okay i should just build a rails app because rails is really good at forms and blah 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 that's data loading all that stuff is really easy in rails um the the problem is is someone's going to come along and they're going to ask you to build uh on this one form some interactive autocomplete widget thing and so it's not yeah you don't like we don't get to choose and say we're not building that because um, rail because it's not rails isn't good Cap- at that capable right yeah and so um, yeah I think this is like it's a it's not an either or thing it's like you need both and once you need both that's what drives people towards React right obviously because this stuff is easy to do in React mm-hmm. and um, yeah that's when these problems creep in that's interesting I mean it. I, I definitely, it's definitely true that um, developers aren't always in control of what they have to build. It's also true that it's easy for developers to over engineer things um, for Absolutely. reasons completely within their control. Um, and um, even if you did need interactive bits, this guy or someone taking his side could make an argument about. Um, you don't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater and discard all of the backend technology that's stable and well understood. Um, but I think you're ultimately, I think where I land on this particular point is like, there is a reason that react and JavaScript has become popular because, and it's largely what you're saying, which is product. People want to see richer experiences. They see it elsewhere and they want it on their products and their sites. They see, you know, intercom. And it's like, wow, that's really powerful. As a product person, I see an experience like that and think it's a powerful way or a Gmail or a Trello or a Notion. And um, yeah, um, it's not to say that a product person couldn't also think of something if they were familiar with the constraints. Like I think about Basecamp a lot because when Ryan Singer talks about this, you know, he is a, a product person but he's also a developer and he understands the constraints of the web and he also understands the constraints of um, Rails, the technology they use. And he's intentionally uh, curbing his product desires based on that technology because he has a belief about the trade-offs with making a calendar that is like a list because it's going to save them all this time in development side instead of just asking for like the most interactive version of the thing. So, um, and maybe that's the answer. One of the answers is like product people should be more aware of those trade-offs and maybe developers are at fault for always pushing the most interactive version. I can build that with React. It'll take two seconds. But what about the opportunity cost, right? Right. The problem exists on both sides. It's, hey, can can you build me an interactive calendar? And the developer says, yeah, of course. This is what React's made for. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. So I'm not trying to push blame off of developers. Like, it, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, yeah, I agree with you. Like, product person that understands this stuff and the constraints are well understood from like way before they hit engineering is is yeah that that app that's a is good thing regardless great, if you end up building yes. a React app or not. Yes. Um, I think the reality the reality is it's just not. It's so far from the truth. I, I think most people are probably in the situation that we were in, you know, at TED, where we're being asked, there's a product team leading, driving it. And of course, you can push back. If you're a super assertive, you can be a super assertive programmer and be like, no, I'm sorry, we can't. Here, let me show you what version of that I can build you. And then you can just like put your foot down. But we also can't deny, again, like these little experiences that we, that really stuck with us, which was like the team using our product saying like oh my gosh i can click the next page and i don't lose my position and i don't scroll and like i don't have to reload the page and i'm like it makes me faster at my job so 
you know, that's really, that's sort of stuff that really has stuck with us and has made us want to make this stuff easier rather than abandoning it. Yeah. Also too. Yeah. We can totally make the argument like, yeah, you should be an assertive programmer and you should push back. I think there's two things like going against that as one is like, um, I don't think programmers really look at their, I don't at least look at my job as being, I should push back on these things unless that's why I've specifically hired. So there have been times where, especially in, in the consulting we do where, um, we are hired because we push back. So mm-hmm. it's way easier to push back. But mm-hmm. when someone comes to you with, okay, we did all these user interviews, uh, the design team mocked this whole thing up. Um, now we need you to build this. It feels like, I, should I push back here? Like this is, there's been months of work put into this. Yeah. Um, and the other part is like, this is going to sound bad, but it's like, I actually want to build these things, right? Yeah. I want to, I want to challenge myself. I want to yeah. build these interactive things. And a lot of times, like, you know, especially when you're a developer at a big company, you don't have the whole business picture. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't know that like, oh, actually the business would, would much rather have this thing done tomorrow than have like a complete fully interactive widget that's done in three months. Mm -hmm. Um, And because you don't have that, you get to kind of twist the story to fit your narrative. And it's Mm -hmm. like, hey, they want an interactive calendar. I want to challenge myself. I want to build an interactive calendar. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm thinking about all those GraphQL queries that this thing is going to (laughs) make. Yeah, I, I think... No, that's a good point. I'm kind of putting myself in the position of like CEO if I were to start a company and like I wanted to make something like Notion and I had like this beautiful thing in my mind of like why this little micro interaction was important and the developer I hired was like, <laughs> um, I can't do that with Rails and I really think we should avoid JavaScript because I read this blog. I'd be like, okay, you're fired, dude. <laughs> 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 like, I would be like, get out of here. Like this is not this is not how we're gonna do this. You know what's so funny is is since <laughs> since like we're in charge of a lot of the software we right now, I've had like the computer complete opposite um a reaction where i'm like okay what is the quickest way to yes. to make the user happy here and, no that is um, that is of course a good motivation you always want to be thinking about that but it's also true that like um we spent extra time on the homepage of mirage to make an interactive video thing because that is where yeah. we landed on being important and we still get comments on it and compliments on it and so i think it was a good investment and so you know, did that mean, did that add technical debt or take us a long time because we're working with tools that are over, op, you know, it, whatever it's, it's, there's, it's, yeah, it's a trade off and there's multiple variables here, you know? Yeah. Well, it's we not understand. all else equal. It's like the, a lot of this is coming from all else equal. You're making a CRUD app of forms. Why are you using React and client rendering? But the situation is usually not all else equal. Yeah. I mean, really the best, I think the best answer here, it's what you said, like the Ryan Singer thing. It's us on the Mirage homepage. Mm -hmm. understanding the trade-off understanding how long it's going to take versus what it gets you Mm -hmm. yeah